All right, what up guys? Uh, welcome back to my YouTube page. Today, I'm gonna discuss band usage during various pressing movements. Um, more specifically, chest pressing here, just to give a couple examples. Um, but I'll kind of talk briefly on a couple other movements as well too, so hopefully you can take some of this information, maybe carry it over to some other stuff. Um, I'm gonna give a, a, a couple second sentence right here um, that is gonna give you the cliff notes um, and then for anyone new here, then I'm gonna go deep or deeper, um, basically to give a better understanding of what is occurring at different movements. Um, so that's your disclaimer, because someone don't watch 10 minutes deep and be like, what does this matter? Oh, this is so complicated. Anything where you want a deeper understanding of something, it's gonna be more complicated than something else. That's basically what deeper means. So if you don't want a deeper understanding, then stop after this next 60 seconds. Um, but if you do want a deeper understanding, have at it. And I'll maybe have a little asterisk after that. So the short cliff note version, get ready to be able to tune off, is if you want to use bands with a notion of making an exercise better, just in and of itself, all other things being the same, better, more efficient, whatever words you wanna use, and you're gonna look at different chest presses, the places where it makes the most sense to the least sense, again, if we're just looking at overall efficiency, I'll get some asterisks, I'll give a million asterisks as I go through the rest of the video, is uh, basically a dumbbell press. So something where basically your arm is coming from out. Uh, we're using something like gravity to the point where your hand or the dumbbell is directly over the shoulder. So where you have this big stacking effect um, for where the line of force is far away from the joint, large moment arm, to where the line of force is basically aligned with the trained joint. So again, if we're talking chest here, we're talking the trained joint is obviously the chest influences mainly the shoulder joint. So bands make the most sec sense actually for something like a dumbbell press. They make the met next most sense for something with a barbell press but not as much sense. And you're gonna have to stick around for the, the nerd notes on that one, why that doesn't make as much sense. Or really when I say it doesn't make as much sense, depending on how you bench, you would maybe want to use a lighter or a smaller band. Where they make the least sense, or basically no sense, except for a very specific, very obscure goal, is for something like a converging chest press. So converging chest press uh, machine, excuse me, a converging chest press machine, is basically like, most of the time it's a plate loaded machine. Obviously they can be selectorized. There's a billion different machines basically um, and there might be some small exceptions to this, but where your, the handles come together. As you go from bottom to the top, the handles come together. That's what I mean as a converging press, is they converge or come together on the concentric. So this is most typically um, gonna be some hammer strength stuff, um, some prime stuff, a lot of different plate loaded stuff where those handles again do converge. So that's the cliff notes. Make the most sense to use bands or the heavier bands. Dumbbells, a little bit of sense for a barbell, almost no sense minus a very specific goal for converging stuff. And so now I'm gonna explain this. Now again, I'll get into, if you've stuck around this far, it would indicate that you might want a deeper understanding. You may want some nerd stuff. Um, again, the main purpose of this video is so you understand the gym decisions you're making. I'm gonna start talking about this every single time. The purpose of this information is not to win arguments. So if you go online and you see somebody banding a hammer strength and you tag them or tag me and say how dumb they are, that's not the point. That says a lot more about your ego than it does saying an actual desire to learn and have a deeper understanding. Again, you don't know someone's goals. I make this joke all the time. I'll continue to make it. I've been in gyms my entire life. I've seen people do some of the perceivably funniest stuff you could ever imagine coming into gyms from jumping around, hanging on cables upside down like Spider-Man, um, to using uh, machines upside down, backwards, whatever. And the point is it's a very, people wanna point at those people and make fun of them, but I joke, some people may be coming to the gym just to let out some sort of physical energy that uh, helps them relieve stress and then in turn helps prevent them murdering people outside in the real world. So I say, I don't know whose goal is coming to the gym is murder prevention. All that being said as well too, is I don't know how serious people take hypertrophy, you know, putting on muscle. There's a whole range of things from someone that again, if you're trying to be Mr. Olympia and you wanna just basically get into, you're doing every single thing that you can perfect, you might be the person where, okay, this one body part, I just can't quite get to match. So you wanna go nerd deep and having your elbow finish at the perfect spot with a perfect intent for a lat pull down, blah, 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 may make perfect sense because you need that specific and that detailed of a result. But there's a whole host of things in between there where again, people say, oh, you can't do pull-ups for lats, and you can't do blah, blah. It's all about context. So all of this is about context. This information is for a deeper understanding. 
it's not to imply after you watch this that someone again doing bands on a converging press is doing anything wrong or bad. It's not the point of this. It's just for deeper understanding. All that being said as well too, is can you be jacked using bands, never using bands, doing something that I say is you know not the most efficient or generally doesn't have the most application for making it better? Yes, I have a video that if you haven't watched, I'll have Trevor link somewhere up here that says uh, basically something along the lines of putting on muscle is easy. I think that's the most important video I've ever posted anywhere at any point in time for anyone concerned about putting on muscle because all this stuff that I'm gonna go over here is like 1% of your total results, um, if that, less than 1%, to be honest. And that video is basically 98% of your results doing all the things in there. So again, someone's gonna say, why are you talking? Why are you rambling? Well, you just don't quite have the perspective that I do. Um, and I'd rather improve the way that you guys think and receive information and what you do with that information. Again, I, uh, my mentor, Tom Purvis, always said, he says it for the context of when you learn something, then people wanna go to battle. He's like, the point of this is not to go to battle because you're not ready for battle. He said, so you're going to go and say someone says this is, you know, you see somebody doing something and again, you tag and say, hey, Joe says you're stupid for using bands on the hammer strength, which I didn't say. Um, and then they start an argument with you and then they say something and then you realize you don't actually have the answer or the next answer or the next answer. So he would say that you're not ready for battle because you actually don't have as deep of a knowledge as you think you do. I also say you're not ready for battle because you should never go to battle. That's not what working out is about. This information is not about making other people feel dumb or you feel smart. Um, again, for the point of your relative dumbness or smartness relative to someone else. But if it's just cool, if you like nerd stuff, want to have a deeper understanding of, again, just more than that superficial 60 second answer. So kudos for all you guys for sticking around. That whole part, if you actually understand why I'm doing that, marinate on that. That's probably the most important part of the video, more so than all this stuff. But this stuff is fun, at least for me. So if you can't tell already, I'm gonna do one at a time over here in a minute. This is someone doing a dumbbell press, dumbbell chest press. This is a bench. This is like looking at the top of their head. So hopefully if someone was lying you know, on a flat bench press, doing flat dumbbell chest press, this is the bench. This is the bird's eye view. I'm looking at the top of their head. This is their rib cage. It's the only thing I'm gonna do 3D, not 3D, 2D, whatever, not stick figures. So again, you're gonna get stick figure for all the appendages, dots for a joint, but just to give you some reference of what this is here. So right here, this dot is the shoulder joint, and this is basically showing four different positions through a chest press. Again, I'm gonna do one arm over at a time here, one position at a time, hopefully to have some clarity to this, um, but I wanted to show Ben basically seeing how this is, this is going from what someone might typically have is the bottom of a chest press, obviously range of motion would be slightly different from person to person, partway through all the way to the top of a dumbbell chest press. So again, this is the upper arm. These dots here, I didn't dot everyone because where it's actually bent, hopefully you guys can tell, but this is upper arm, elbow joint, upper arm, elbow joint, upper arm, elbow joint, upper arm, elbow joint, lower arm, lower arm, lower arm, lower arm, got it. And this little dot is the dumbbell they're pressing because we don't only need a little baby dumbbell. If you really think hard enough about your form, you don't even need heavy weight. If you're new here, that's a joke because it needs to be said. So when we're looking at this pressing thing, again, so all this stemmed from me doing a short video where I talked about uh, very fast about how there's been misinformation put out about people saying that all presses are an ascending profile. So your body has a um, strength profile because you have strength. So what is your body capable of doing from this perceived strength thing? And most of the time for simplicity's sake, that makes the most sense just looking at a single joint and a single muscle. So again, there's exceptions to this. Again, not just the length tension thing, but how a, you know, a joint, a muscle crosses over a joint thing. But for simplicity's purposes, as you go from a muscle, so this is my pec going from it being lengthened to being it fully shortened, you are for sure in pretty much every muscle much weaker in that fully shortened, fully contracted position, perceivably much weaker. Um, and then you are getting stronger somewhere in the mid range, somewhere in the length and range. Um, that's where, again, depending on how things cross over joint, it's a little bit different, but the trend is the most important thing. So again, stronger, sometimes strongest, sometimes strongest, sometimes stronger, weakest. All right, so pretty much every muscle in the body that's really a strength profile thing. When we're looking at exercises, we look at their resistance profile. So someone says that any pressing motion, its resistance profile is ascending, meaning you're much stronger at the top. Um, and there's a couple things that that neglects. Really the main thing that it neglects is the line of force and where that line of force is relative to the joint, which again, when we're talking line of force relative to a joint, we're gonna talk about that moment arm thing. 
Maybe I'll link another video in here. I have a video, right, Trevor, about moment arms and stuff like that, torque. We'll link another one up here about torque moment arms. I'm gonna talk about that. Um, if you don't have any understanding with that, check out that video. Uh, and again, it's because the most important thing or understanding what your muscles actually manage is they don't manage load in your hand, they manage torque at joints. And so half of the equation of torque is moment arms. I understand that sounds kind of nerdy, like I'm trying to sound smart, which I'm not smart, and I'm not trying to sound smart at all. Uh, but if you realize, obviously, everyone talks about load, 200 pounds on your back, 50 pounds in your hand, and realize as far as your muscle is concerned, that is literally half the equation. Um, so again, if you don't have any idea of moment arms, this might be a little bit confusing, but I'm gonna go through it in here. So when we're looking at a pressing movement, with this type of pressing movement, it's accurate to say that this has an ascending profile. And all that means basically, if I had to pick a weight I could do at the bottom, so you take your max bench press and you had to do a weight at the top, um, or let's say a dumbbell press, sorry, so I'm not getting ahead of myself. So I've got a dumbbell press, where could you do more six inch reps? So again, could you do more here at the bottom or if we're just talking degrees of motion? So let's talk about doing reps here or let's talk about doing reps here. Or we use the same thing. Another example of this is a very perfect example is a barbell back squat. Is it someone where they could do you know, more weight with 400 pounds at the top six inches or more weight with 400 pounds at the bottom six inches? So everyone has basically the reason because it can be the same weight traveling the same distance, but it doesn't have the same expression of force torque at the joint because of that moment arm thing. That's why I say that that's important. But again, that all sounds complicated, but a lot of people that have pretty good, maybe natural mechanical engineering brains are kind of aware of that. You don't even have to be aware of it. That's why, again, you look at people that cheat at squats. No one ever looked at someone at the very rock bottom of a back squat, you know, doing 400 pounds, just moving up and down in the bottom six inches and said, ha, look at that cheater. But if you walk across most gyms in America, you see somebody that has no business having 405 on their back and they're just moving up and down six inches, people either say or think, hey, look at that cheater. That's why, so that's that expression of force thing and the way of torque goes. So in this one, because this line of force changes position as we go from the bottom to the top and those moment arms get very long and very short, torque goes from very high at points to non-existence at other points. And so what people say is because that torque drops off so much, it's so much harder, relatively speaking here, than here, let's use bands to make that better, right? So you can't change the moment arm thing with this given exercise. So these are moment arms, so I'm gonna draw them on here. So we do the distance of the line of force to the trained joint. I'm gonna start with the smallest and go to the biggest, and this should make sense in your brain, basically where the dumbbell chest press is hardest. So right here, this one is basically zero. So again, it's the perpendicular distance or basically where this line of force is closest to the trained joint. So right here, it basically passes through the joint is what I was trying to say. So this is why if I said, hey, take your, you know, if I gave you a 50 pound dumbbell and I said, where could you hold it longer, here or here? At some point in time, your arm's gonna fall off here. We're here basically, yes, some muscles are still working to a certain degree, just keeping the joint in the socket, but you could hold it here much longer. And that's because here there's no moment arm. There's no basically distance between that line of force and the axis of the joint. So the next closest is we come to the somewhere near the top-ish position. We draw this 90 degree angle, make sure I'm kind of doing this right, leaning from the side. This distance is a moment arm. So again, when we're talking moment arms, just assuming we're using the same weight the whole time, you multiply weight times moment arm and that gives you torque. And so you don't have to know the exact numbers, that's almost important at no point in time in training in the training world. It's more so just about knowing where it's bigger or smaller, right? So again, we can determine this one is zero over here. So zero moment arm times 50 pounds is zero. So we know this position is less torque at the joint and in turn, easier, less work for the pecs than this position because it's the same 50 pounds, but now we have a moment arm. We multiply this moment arm by this weight and there's more torque at the joint. The next position where generally it's gonna be the hardest or the most torque is where this line of force based on the length of your upper arm is as far away as it's gonna get from the joint, assuming we're keeping the dumbbell stacked over the elbow. Obviously it would change if we change the way. I'm demonstrating this showing how we would press if you're a bodybuilder intentionally not trying to keep your, um, keeping your triceps from doing much work. So as we go out further, the next one, this next position, this is actually where there's the most. Again, it's always gonna be, these lines are gonna go over top of each other. So I should have actually done the shorter one. So let's actually go here. So all the way in the bottom position here, if you actually bring yourself past 90 degrees, past this position in a deeper stretch, technically in this fully lengthened position, it's less torque at the joint. Now this is where that muscle length thing might play into it a little bit. So some people say, well, this is harder, this feels harder to me. That might be the case, but I'm just talking joint torque at this point in time. So as we go from here to here, to the all the way at the bottom, this is the least torque, the next least torque, the next least torque, and the most torque is gonna be this one because that's the longest um, moment arm. Again, multiplied by that load, 
where that line in your upper arm is basically at a 90 degree angle to the line of force. So hopefully that makes some degree of sense here where we look at the joint and you basically go from um, a lot of torque in this lengthened and mid-range position. So from here, kind of in the bottom, to as you go to the top, less and less and less torque. So the whole point of this is what's more efficient? If your body is, even though the torque drops off so much, you're capable of doing more there. So again, if I'm if I, this, I'm basically when you pick a dumbbell press, you pick a weight that you use. For the most part, you're picking a weight based off what can you do at the bottom. Like I gave that example before for real numbers, someone might be able to do 100 pounds for 10 reps. Basically, it's because you're limited by how many reps you can do here. If I said you can do 100 pounds, but right here, how much weight could you do? How many reps could you do? Or what's your 10 rep max in this top position? Instead of 100 pounds, it might be 150 pounds. So for this notion of efficiency, if I could do 100 pounds at the bottom and 150 pounds at the top, that would make that torque a little bit more even through the range of motion and matching the challenge of what my body is capable of doing. The only thing I'll address here is as it comes to top, people that know kind of this profile thing. So this whole time I'm talking about a resistance profile, the way that this exercise expresses force at a joint, Someone's gonna say, well, aren't your muscles weaker in the fully shortened position? Didn't I say that in the beginning? Yes, I did say that in the beginning. And that'll come in to be very important when I talk about the converging press. Um, but they're not so weak that they can only handle nothing, right? So the point is, if I get to this somewhere near, not probably all the way, so let's say hypothetically, this would be a fully shortened pec, maybe. This is pretty close to it. You say, well, aren't you weaker there? Don't we want it getting lighter? You know, really most profiles, they only really drop off drastically what your body is capable of doing really in that fully shortened position. So even though you technically are getting weaker uh, just from a single muscle standpoint as you come to the top, it's not as dramatic as going all the way to zero, right? So if we just basically really match most bodybuilders, what I wanted to show on this one, which I'll add a limb to. So this is why, and this is, makes sense. So if I was gonna do just a dumbbell press, do most bodybuilders bring it to the point where everything is stacked? No, they don't. Why don't they do that? Because it doesn't matter what this weight is, times zero moment arm is zero torque. So people say, keep tension on, which really doesn't sound as cool, I guess, but keep torque on. And so what does that mean? Let's see if I get the right colors here. So this is why most bodybuilders stop here. So they do something that looks like this. They might go here and then they go here and they stop at this point. And I think this is a good practice. So I'm not saying that bodybuilders, this is a thing where bodybuilders inherently just kind of have, they can feel that tensiony thing. They can feel that challenge thing. So this is why most bodybuilders, if we draw that line of force down, what's the difference between those two? Well, this, even though it's still a small moment arm, still has some degree of moment. It's this, I'm not gonna draw it right through the joint just so you can see, but this short little moment arm right there, now they're just having something, small amount times dumbbell equals some amount of torque. So that's why I just wanna draw that on there as well too. That's why dumbbell or bodybuilders tend to not go here. They might just stop here just to keep torque at the joint and in turn tension on the pecs. So with this notion of making the exercise more efficient, there is a big difference at torque from the bottom to torque from the top. So if you want that number to stay a little bit more even the whole way through, slap a band around your back, however the heck you want to MacGyver it. And that, what does that do? If hopefully it doesn't make sense, bands, rubber bands, basically express more force the longer they get. So if you have a whatever at the bottom, let's say you have an 80 pound dumbbell at the bottom, the band is already expressing 20 pounds of tension, let's say hypothetically wrapped around your back. So now you have 100 pounds actually in your hand. As you go to the top and that band lengthens, 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 you might have 130 pounds at the top, right? So 80 pound dumbbell, 20 pound uh, band uh, force equals 100. And that band stretches and goes up another 30 pounds of resistance in your hand. Now you have 130 pounds total. And I would say just again, from a pure efficiency standpoint, that would be a more efficient exercise. Now again, hopefully you guys remember what I said at the very beginning of the video. I didn't say you couldn't get big. I almost never do dumbbell presses. There's things like training economy you have to consider where what does that mean? I mean, it, it is kind of a pain in the butt, right? If you've ever done these, it's kind of a pain. It kind of sucks. You know, making sure it's not in the same spot, making sure it's not a huge pain in the ass. How much does it piss you off to set up? So again, this is purely on paper stuff and this is where everyone on social media and YouTube just kind of misses the boat on everything um, is basically um, people will say, oh, well, this is perfect. And somebody else, a meathead, says, well, I don't want to do that because that's a pain in the ass. And then Mr. Skinny Pencil Neck Nerd will say, well, it's more efficient, blah, 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 blah. Not doing something because it's a pain in the ass is a good reason to not do something. I'm not joking because most people that are actually producing great results, again, if you watch that video I get in the beginning that I linked you to, to it's easy to put on muscle, um, they know that one of the biggest things to contribute putting on muscle is adherence. If every single time you go into the gym, I'm telling you to do something that's a pain in the ass and it pisses you off, you're gonna be in a bad mood, it'll probably reduce performance, and you actually could potentially have worse results than if you just did an exercise that didn't piss you off as much. So again, that's the kind of 
Is that missing the forest for the trees? I don't know if that metaphor works there. It works okay there, I guess, supposedly. Um, so again, hopefully in that little nugget there, is probably more important than the whole rest of the video. But again, some people, and I, I say the more advanced you get, where do profiles matter? They matter a lot more for more advanced people, in my opinion, where you're already kind of at your, what, what happens in training? You're always moving towards a point of diminishing returns. You need more and more and more and more and more and more stimulus. At some point in time, obviously you can't keep adding volume. It just doesn't make any sense. You can't be in the gym for six hours a day aside from it not being as effective. You can keep adding weight. That's a big thing to a certain point. But at some point in time, it's not just about how much weight you're doing. It's not about how much range of motion you're doing. It's how much weight are you doing through a full range of motion. That's an RTS thing um, that I think is trademarked by Tom Purvis where it talks about it's not just about range of motion. It's about range of motion with appropriate load challenge. And a lot of people miss the boat on that. So again, if your stimulus demands keep getting greater and greater and greater, I would argue looking for more efficient profiles is another way to make sure that you can actually continue to increase those demands. And the same thing if we're looking at this whole recovery thing, where again, as your stimulus demands get higher, your recovery needs to keep up, right? So it's not just, if we could technically say, okay, well, one set's good, five sets is more stimulus, would that technically lean to more growth? If you could recover from it, I would argue yes. But there's a point in term where you just can't keep up with it. You know, so I would argue the stimulus, this is why I tend to be a little bit more of a lower volume guy, from a more efficient, less sets of a more efficient exercise is better or easy to recover from than more sets of a less efficient exercise. Play that back. Less sets of a more efficient exercise is better or easy to recover from than more sets of a less efficient exercise. So anyway, that is going over why I think bands are a good um, option for a uh, dumbbell press, a dumbbell chest press. Next, I will go into a barbell press, a couple different variations of that. And then lastly, I'll go into a converging press um, to cover, um, you know, again, uh, where band application may or may not make as much sense with those.